class. Welcome to Advantage. I'm Dr. Scott Adamson and I'm going to take you on a little mathematical journey here today because we know that students sometimes struggle with the idea of an exponent when it's not a whole number, when it's a fraction. And so this video is going to take you through uh, some thinking that will help you to see what happens when you have a negative, uh, when you have a fractional exponent. So here's how it starts. Let's start with something that we know really well. Suppose you wanted to think about 10 times 3.5. We know that multiplication means, or can mean, to take 10 and add it three and a half times. So you took 10 and added it three times, and then a half a time. Now a half of a 10 would be a five. So you would add 10 three and a half times to get a total of 35. So because of that thinking that you has been established in your brain probably for many, many, many years, when we get to something like this, 10 raised to the power of 3.5, sometimes students mistakenly believe that we should take 10 and multiply it 3.5 times. Now, 10 to the third power is certainly 10 multiplied three times, but what about a half a time? Does that mean times five? Like it meant plus five up here? Actually, no. And so we are gonna explore what does this really mean? Because this is not what it really means. The way we're gonna explore it is by making a table. Again, let's go back to what we already know. We know how multiplication works. If n is zero, then 10 times zero would give us zero. If n is one, 10 times one would give us 10. If n is 2, 10 times 2 would give us 20. And if n is 3, 10 times 3 would give us 30. And what we see here in this kind of a situation of multiplication, we see that as n increases by 1, the product increases by 10. When n increases by 1, we see an increase in 10 here. We saw an increase in 10 here. And when n increases by 1, we see an increase in 10 here. But notice it's an increase, it's an addition of 10 each time. And when we go in between, like if we wanted to think about, what about when n is one half? Well, when n is one half, 10 times one half would give you five. And now the increase, as n increases by a half, the increase is five each time. And we would see that pattern on down the list. If I went to 1.5 here, 10 times 1.5, would give us 15. So we would see this same pattern of adding five, adding five, adding five. And if I continued that on this table, we would continue to see that pattern. In fact, I think you should continue that pattern and convince yourself that as n increases by a half, the product is gonna increase by five each time. Now, when we raise to a power, we can kind of think through it similarly, but what happens is not the same. We have to think through this a little bit differently. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna start with n equals one. If n equals one here, 10 raised to the first power is just 10. When n is two, 10 raised to the second power. What that means is 10 times 10, 10 raised to the second power, 10 times 10 is 100. And if we go to three, when n is three, 10 raised to the third power would mean 10 times 10, or 100, times 10 again, which would produce 1,000. So let's examine the pattern here. As n increases by one, from one to two, or from two to three, the result over here is 10 times 10 is 100. And when n increases by one, 100 times 10 is 1,000. The pattern we see here with the exponent is not an addition of 10, but a multiplication of 10. And if we were to extend that pattern backwards to zero, if we know that the multiplication of 10 is gonna be the pattern here, then what we would have to say is that 10 to the zero power is gonna to have to be one. Then one times 10 is 10, times 10 is 100, times 10 is 1,000, et cetera. So that's how it works with whole numbers, but what happens in between? Like what would happen if we had a one half? What would happen if we had 10 to the one half power? Now let's think through this and see if we can determine what the pattern is. Like over here, we could determine the pattern was add five, 
for every increase of one half. But over here, what's gonna happen? Well, the way I'd like you to think about it is this. If, if you believe that with exponential, with exponents, we see an increasing um, value by multiplying by 10, let's see what the multiplication would be. That is, if we start with one, we're gonna multiply by something to get this result here. And then we would take that result here and multiply by something to get the 10 here. So we're gonna multiply by something and multiply by something ending up at 10. In other words, we're gonna start with one, we're gonna multiply by something, I'm gonna use a mathematical word here, the word is factor. I'm gonna multiply by some unknown factor, I'll call it F for factor, and then I'm gonna get some answer here. Then I'm gonna multiply by that same factor again, and I should end up with 10. So the question is, what factor would that be? Let's figure it out. One times F times F. We could say that that is F squared equals 10. And if F squared equals 10, if some number squared equals 10, the way we determine what that number is, is we take the square root of that number. The square root of 10 is what you square to get 10. So, the factor here is times the square root of 10. 1 times the square root of 10. What I'm saying is 10 to the 1 half power is the square root of 10. And if I multiply by the square root of 10 again, the square root of 10 times the square root of 10 would, of course, give us 10. Now, let's see if that pattern holds up like it did in our, our adding a 5 pattern that we saw previously. Let's start at 10. So what if we wanted to know what happens at 1.5? So let's start at 10. Let's multiply by something. I don't know what it's gonna be. That's gonna give me 10 to the 1.5. And if I multiply that again by that same factor, I'll get to 100. Let's see what happens. 10 multiplied by a factor, multiplied by a factor, remember we have to do it twice, is gonna end up with 100. So again, factor times factor, that factor times itself, we can say is f to the second power. 10 times something is 100. That something has to be 10 because 10 times 10 is 100. So we know f squared has to be 10. Same thing we had before. And so now we can again say that that factor is the square root of 10. So yes, that common multiplier every half step is indeed the square root of 10. So it's a little different thinking when you have an exponent than when we just had straight multiplication. When you get to a half a step, 10 to the one half power is not some halfway like we saw before in a linear situation, it's, it's actually a square root of 10. And 10 to the 1.5 power would be 10 times the square root of 10. There's always this common multiplier of the square root of 10. What I'm saying is this, if you have any number, it doesn't just work with 10. In fact, I would challenge you, try this whole patterning with five to a power, eight to a power, two to a power. But any number to a power, if that power is one half, then the way we think about that is it's the same as the square root of a. Now let's just say that this is good for a greater than uh, zero for now. We'll talk about what happens in other cases later, but for now, a greater than zero. In fact, in general, if you had, say, a base raised to the one-third power, you could likewise think through this and think, what are you, what's the common factor that's gonna get us to that next step? And we'd find out that it's gonna be a cube root of a. Or if you had a to the one-fourth power, that would be a fourth root of a. And in general, if you have a to the one over n power, again, n is greater than uh, zero, and let's say n is a whole number, then we're gonna have this, we call it the nth root of a. So we saw how to handle what uh, exponents that are fractional in nature. What do we do when exponents are negative in nature? Let's take a look at that. So again, we're gonna build a, a table here of, of values. We're gonna do 10 to the minus two, 10 to the minus one, zero, one, two, and three. But let's start with what we already know. What we already know is 10 to the zero power was one. 10 to the first power is 10. 10 to the second power, or 10 times 10, is 100. And 10 to the third power, or 10 times 10 times 10, 
is 1,000. And the patterning that we see here is that for each increase in one in our exponent, we multiply the result by 10. So the common factor here was, as n increases by one is we have a factor of 10. If that pattern is to continue, what would have to go here? What would have to be the case for 10 to the minus one power? That is, what number would have to be here so that when we continue this pattern of multiply by 10, we get one? And the only choice is one tenth. One tenth times one, uh, times 10 would be one. What about back here, 10 to the minus two? What number would have to go here so that when we multiply by 10, we get one tenth? One one hundredth times 10 would be one tenth. And so the pattern that we see here is that if you have 10, raised to a negative n power, when n is a whole number, let's say for now, then the result is gonna be one over 10 to that power. Notice back here, 10 to the minus two is one over 10 squared, 10 squared is 100. 10 to the minus one is one over 10. If we did minus three, we'd get one over 10 to the third power. In general, a raised to the negative n power would give me one over a to the n. And again, let's just say for now that A has to be greater than zero uh, to make this true. I hope that helps you really think about and make sense of what happens when you have fractional exponents and negative exponents in the work that you do.